Right, we're on the Gold Pine Road Trip to Field Days. We've got James from Eagle Tech, got Eric there Watson, Guinness World Record wheat grower. James, the Eagle Tech technology, you've been showing us what it can do. Give us a bit of a talk on why this technology is so revolutionary. I think it's revolutionary because um, you can bring down a off-the-shelf drone, um, bring it down to a farm like Eric's, uh, and simply put it through some software that essentially flies the drone for you. Um, you can then bring it into our mapping platform and I guess quickly analyse exactly how Eric's wheat crop is, is looking um, with a couple of clicks of the button. Is this something that any farmer can do or do you have to come and do it? Uh, definitely not. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward process now. The drone flies itself, lands itself, um, and then the, the software is step by step and you can get your analysis straight out of it. This is uh, one of those things that uh, we've prepared a little bit earlier. You've had an opportunity to do some work here on Eric's property. Wh why don't you tell them what you've seen? Yeah, definitely. So we managed to sneak down just for the floods down here in Canterbury. Um, and we came down and I've quickly processed this ahead of time. So quickly looking at the, um, the crop itself, it stitched all of those drone images together and actually put it into a nice uh, one picture. Um, so running a little bit of analysis on it, you can see that um, the areas of red and indicating areas of, uh, I guess, poor health or lower health relatively, and areas of green are actually looking pretty good. Um, we can then, I guess, compare it to other things like um, how exactly that is compared to the terrain and the slope. Um, so we can see, I don't know if you can see just in here, there's a, a little bit of a, I guess, an old stream bed, yep. something like that, and it does seem that the the crop health is, is, is kind of aligning to that. So maybe areas of not so good health are aligning to areas where the stream might used to be. So the soil might not be so good in that area. But I guess the next steps would be, is all this data is now in your, I guess, spatial record of your farm. So all that data is gonna be living in one place. We can then take this same data out into the field and actually locate exactly where those areas of, of not so good crop health are. And then we can actually maybe try to figure out what's going on. So maybe checking the soils or checking the fertilizer, things like that. But just give us a good idea or indication of exactly where to go and look. So Eric, that's the first time that you have uh, seen this data. What do you make of that? Uh, you're a Guinness World Record holder for wheat. Is this something that you can use, do you think, to uh, make your cropping better? Yeah, well, it's very interesting. You can see that, I mean, obviously you can see the tram lines in where I've sprayed, so that's always going to be lower yielding and you can't do anything about that because you stick to them all the time but but you can see old areas of stream and there may be some sort of um, something you can do to actually nullify the effect of that old stream bed whether it's more fertilizer required on that little bit there or, or less fertilizer required on the good bit so I think in years to come that'll have a have a lot of you know valuable information in it so as a, as a farmer, as James said, this is something that you can do on farm with an, on, with an off the shelf drone and then utilise it into this uh, sort of software, run it through the software. Is this something that you, know, you think that you would be interested in using? Yes, possibly. I mean, we have, we have drone wheat crops previous to this just to see what's going on. And in conjunction with our yield mapping on the combine, I think you know, this technology will become invaluable in years to come. Sure especially with all the rules and regulations we're starting to face, I think it may be even become more valuable. Yeah, that is a good point. The, um, the new regulations are starting to require so much more information to be captured mm -hmm. so it can, the authorities can actually see it so we can track and trace exactly what we're doing. James, um, we're on a cropping farm here, but you've also done some work with um, a silage stack. Tell me about how the same technology can work with, um, with silage stacks. Yeah, definitely. So I guess drones can uh, capture information both 2D and 3D. Um, so if we're looking at the, I guess, the 3D view of a silage stack, exact same process of stitching all those images together, and then we can just simply switch to a 3D view, and we'll quickly browse to um, the silage stack here. So running the same calculations as that uh, crop analysis, we can, I guess, figure out the volume. So if we know it's a, a maize stack, for example, um, we can figure out the exact dry matter of it. So we've got a good indication of how much stock we got for winter. 
um, things like that. Pretty invaluable information, I suppose. It is invaluable. I remember my time on the farm, I was stepping them out and trying to average it out and measure it, and uh, invariably I got it wrong. Uh, this will give it to me 100%, so I know exactly how much feed I've got on hand, whether I need to, uh, you know, uh, whether I need to feed some more out or I've got enough. Exactly. So just combining that drone drone technology and mapping technology helps bring that, I guess, spatial picture of the, the farm. So you've got a live view at all times. All right, James Wright, Eagle Tech, and uh, Eric. Um, just as a matter of interest, so can you get the dry matter quantity on a field, of, you know, say your 20 hectare paddock of kale or paddock of grass or paddock of oats, would you be able to estimate the dry land matter off this technology of, with the drone? I guess if you if had the right software? Yeah, if there's, if there's a certain height, I guess, of the, of the wheat, do you mean? Is that yeah, or perhaps grass or, or oats for silage or kale for cow feed. Yeah, I guess if you could compare um, the base level of the, the paddock, figure out the height of the the grass, hay, whatever it is, mm. that, I guess that would be how you do it. Mm. I haven't mm. tested it, but we could, we could give it yeah. a Maybe that's something we do next time. Yeah, Yeah, well, it possibly is, because, I mean, that, that would be invaluable to guys that are selling feed um, instead of somebody walking through the crop to get an estimate of dry matter. I mean, they might need to take a few cuts, but it would just give them an estimate of feed. And also, come pre-harvest, you could actually do, you know, if you had the right software, you could probably determine what sort of yield you're going to get or have a pretty good idea of what sort of yield you're going to get over the season for your wheat or whatever you were growing. Definitely. I guess it's fair to say, James, we're just scratching the surface of what yeah. this eagle, technolo eagle technology can oh, bring yeah. to New Zealand farming, agriculture. Definitely. It's a really rapidly growing field and it's, uh, yeah, like you said, there's so much potential in terms of what we can figure out to hopefully get more and more records for yourself, Eric. Thanks, James. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric Watson, thanks so much for your time. James Wright, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, fantastic.